Okay, so in this recording, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show the fully fledged uh, demonstration of how to utilize the uh, rich client ADF search form. Uh, as I had mentioned before in the last video that we did, um, when I was showing how to create the list of values and how to use those, I had implied that I would go ahead and then create an additional uh, video which showed actually fully realizing the search form that we were starting to create utilizing the uh, list of values and this is it. So as I said before uh, the little test app that I was making was basically just a simple little uh, set of task flows and this is the task flow with the move object that we were using before and here's the the data diagram that we saw uh, which has the move uh, <coughs> data control that we were using has the the type ID which then binds out to the uh, types lookup table that we are using which is how we were creating the list of values so what we're going to do is we're going to create a search form that allows us to search over this table so we'll go back to here's the um, the page that we have realized or the fragment that we have realized in that section of the task flow and I cleared out the search form that we created using the uh, when we were creating the um, list of values uh, walk through just so that we could go from scratch <clears throat> and so if we come back here first step that we're going to that we're going to do is create the actual search table that's going to give us our results so I'll grab the move view and I will drag it over and create a read-only table and so in here we'll go ahead and drop out the ID value which we won't need and we'll move the name up to the front move the type ID up there as well and the category so we organize, reorganize those we can put row selection filtering and sorting on and we'll create that table the next thing we need to do is actually create the search form that we are going to use and I like using the structure panel because obviously the stuff we're creating here is just XML metadata and the structure panel allows us to get the hierarchical view of that metadata and allows for easier editing when we're just trying to go ahead and drop something very precisely and so here we have the table and I'm trying to insert just above that and I'm going to insert it as an ADF search form. So there we go. And if we note in here as well, we've also got the LOV because we've already created the LOV. I left that on the view object. It's also got this output text, a find and an execute button. As a little preview of what the functionality is going to be when we use this we click on the find button to go into find mode and then it will tell us in this output text that the search form is in find mode we it'll blank all of these fields <coughs> excuse me and we can then enter the search values that we want to search by we then hit execute and it executes that search now what we can then do is when we go back into find mode what it will do is it will blank all of the fields that we did not enter something in in the first time and allow us to enter something in at that point. So it allows you to do kind of a uh, search within these results kind of thing. And if you want to just start over, you manually erase the entry that's in the field and start over that, that way. So we've got this stuff in place. Let's go ahead and run it and take a look at what it looks like. So here we go, it's launched our app. We'll just go ahead and navigate to the move management. <clears throat> and so here we go, we've got the page. Now one thing that we noticed here, and that I'm not too happy about, is the fact that with the type IDs now, it goes ahead and it's got it as the numerical value instead of the name. So we'll have to go and change that. The other thing is that the table's not stretched across the width of the page, so we'll have to do something about that too. So
So let's go back to JDeveloper. And for the type ID, it's made as an output text. So let's go ahead and delete that from there. We'll go and expand the data control. Go down to the type ID. Drag and drop that over. We'll create it as a single selection, ADF select one choice, which is how it renders the one up on the search form. And there we go, it'll be bound to that and just going to make use of the LOV creation that we did before. Let's just take a look at that real quick. If we open up our move view, we can see that we select our type ID and list of values. We still have the list of values definition in there, which, which it's going to make use of for us. I also think I'll go ahead and change the header on this from type ID to type name. So let's expand the properties inspector a little bit. We've got our header text here. We'll go ahead and have that stop taking the column name and we'll just say type. There we go. And so now for stretching the table itself we could use a panel stretch layout which we've got up here but I think a better way of doing it's going to be to actually apply a style to the appearance of the table so down here in our style we've got our style class and there's one in there that we'll go ahead and put on it okay so the AF stretch width we'll go ahead and stretch that component to the width of the available area for us. <clears throat> Save all and we should be able to just go ahead and refresh the page. Sure enough, there we go. So now we've got the actual name there everything else is laid out all right the one thing we could also that we can take that we should take note of is that because we got it as a select one choice now even though it's a read-only table people can come in and click on it now it won't make a change to the data or to the data behind the scenes because it is a read-only um, but it might be annoying the fact that people can click on this we could use an alternate control or we could just take this control and set it to disabled which wouldn't allow them to click on it but would also kind of gray the column and make it a little bit harder to read but for now let's go ahead and just show the functionality so we can click on find note that it goes into find mode I can go ahead and search for everything with a power of 50 Say execute and note that it now finds everything here that has a power of 50 for me so like I said before, if I now put it back into find mode, it retains what I've searched on and it will allow me then to go ahead and add in additional ones to do the search within kind of results that I was talking about. And there we go. And note also when it's in find mode, it also shows in the summary or in the actual table that we're bound to what values we've inputted as well that we're that we're doing inside of. So I'm gonna remove that one and I'll change it down here and put it something there. Again, execute and see what that brings for me. Okay, and so again, like I said, so again shows us the ability for it to do searching as well as uh, search inside using that find and all we had to do was to drop the table on there that it's going to bind to and then drop the search form and by virtue of dropping the search form on there it goes ahead and binds itself right to the table and we can see that also if we go ahead and look in the execute button if we look under the bindings for it we can see that as its partial triggers it's bound to the moves table that we created down here 
So again, very easy functionality to implement and uh, very effective for doing rapid development or rapid prototyping. And in the blog post, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll call out a link to Shai's website, um, Shai Smeltzer, who helped me out with some with with kind of the the starting point for some of this, showing some of the other capabilities for doing searching. Um, but none of them that he was that he demonstrated for me and that I'll link in were quite as simple as just being able to do this. I mean, this was by far the easiest and and most robust implementation that I have found and I hope it's helpful